In this video, we are comparing two popular types of home desktop lasers, a CO2 laser and a diode laser. This video is geared towards crafters, hobbyists, small business owners who want a laser to use in your home to make all kinds of projects. So we're gonna cover the biggest differences between these two machines, and I wanna help you figure out which type is right for you. The goal here is to help you make a really well-informed decision when you buy your craft laser. Let's get into it. Hey there, I'm Sarah. You're watching Creative Ramblings, where I share simple craft projects and in-depth tutorials and reviews. We talk a lot about lasers here on this channel. Today, we are taking a step back and we're gonna do an overview and compare a CO2 laser to a diode laser. I'm not specifically talking about any specific brand or type of laser here. I just wanna give you an overview of the two. Full disclosure, the lasers that I may be showing in this video were given to me by various brands to share reviews in the past. This video right here is not sponsored and all the opinions I share here are all my own. If you're looking for more information on a particular laser, head down to the description and take a look at my individual review videos where I can really help you determine if that particular laser is right for you. So let's start with the basics. What is a craft laser? That's the word that I'm gonna use to refer to these lasers today. So what is a craft laser? If you're familiar with Cricut or Silhouette, Think of these machines as a much more powerful version and a more versatile version of those machines. With a laser, you can cut and engrave hundreds of materials like wood, metal, acrylic, leather, stone, all kinds of things. You also have the ability to create 3D objects. So you can engrave on glasses or tumblers. You can cut out different pieces of wood to create sculptures and boxes. There are so many options when using a craft laser. These lasers are easy to use. They are meant to be used in your home. So they come with a lot of safety features that make them a good fit for your craft room or your office space. So there's two very popular types of craft lasers out there right now, both a diode and a CO2 laser. So let's jump in to a diode laser first. There are a ton of diode lasers out there for purchase. There's a couple reasons that we gravitate towards those. One, they're pretty low in price, and there's a wide range of power, anywhere from 5 watts to 50 watts. The way a diode laser works is it is a light that is very powerful light that is pushed through a lens, creating a really strong beam that can cut and engrave your materials. There is not much machinery involved, so diode lasers can be really lightweight and even portable. Diode lasers can be either open style or enclosed. I prefer the enclosed lasers, they're just a little bit safer. You can actually find a full review of open versus enclosed lasers up above if you wanna understand that a little bit better. Diode lasers do get hot, but not so hot that you need a special cooling system. There's just a fan built in that's gonna help keep the laser cool. With an enclosed style diode laser, it will have a fan and a vent that you can put out your window or into a smoke purifier. Most diodes are gonna come with some type of accessories that you can add on initially or down the road. These include a rotary attachment to allow you to do round and circular items, or a conveyor that'll allow you to do really long items. Some of the enclosed diode lasers that I have reviewed on this channel include the X-Tool M1 and S1, the Glowforge Aura, and the We Create Vision. If you've heard of one of those and you wanna learn more, check out the video down in the description. So what can a diode laser cut? A really good rule of thumb is if a laser can cut the material, it can also engrave it. But just because it can engrave it doesn't mean it can cut it. So a diode can cut wood, acrylic, leather, cardboard, foam, paper, a whole bunch of different materials. You can engrave 
metals, certain type of metals. If you're making uh, those really popular tumbler, tumblers, they usually have a coating over the metal. Those are called a, a powder coating or an anodized aluminum. You can engrave those with a diode laser. You can engrave acrylic when it's opaque and kind of a matte finish. Diode lasers don't do great with clear, translucent, or blue and white colors of acrylic. Diode lasers are great for stainless steel and coated aluminum. They can actually create some really cool colors when you do engraving on them. Diode lasers, right now, the kinds that you can get in your home range from about five watts to 50 watts. Some of the five to 10 watts you can get in open style lasers. As they get more powerful, you're definitely gonna want the enclosure to go around it. The more powerful the laser, the more efficient and fast your projects are gonna be completed. For example, if you are cutting the same piece of wood on a five watt laser versus a 40 watt laser, the 40 watt laser is gonna get it done in a matter of seconds. The five watt is going to take a little bit longer. Let's talk about the CO2 laser. So this laser beam is created a little bit differently. Inside the machine, you're going to have a tube that's filled with CO2 gas. This Inside this tube, a laser beam is created, reflected off a number of mirrors, comes down through a lens to create that beam that's going to cut and engrave your materials. A CO2 laser needs to be cooled. So around that tube of gas, you're going to have another tube of water. So you either need to have an external pump or you need to have a CO2 laser that comes with a cooling system in it. You're also gonna have a fan in your machine to extract some of the smoke. CO2 lasers are incredibly powerful. They start at about 40 watts and can go up to 300. This means your projects are gonna get done a lot faster, especially when you're comparing the same material with a diode in a CO2. Because of the complexity, CO2 lasers are big and heavy. There is a lot in the enclosure that's needed to keep the laser running efficiently and to keep you safe. These are not portable machines. They're gonna stay where you put them. They do require calibration when you initially set the machine up. And if you do any routine maintenance or cleaning, you may have to recalibrate that laser to get the, mo to get the best cut or engraving on your material. Because of the power, you are going to get more smoke when cutting and engraving. So you definitely need to vent this out a window or through a smoke purifier, but really the window is gonna be the best bet. You also wanna work in a really well-ventilated area so any of that additional smoke can just get out of the way. The CO2 laser that I own, I own one. It is the P2 by X-Tool and you can find a full review and some projects for it down below. So what does a CO2 laser do well? Well, we touched on the fact that because it is so powerful, your projects are gonna get done really, really fast. So if you are looking at efficiency and you wanna get a lot of pieces done quickly, the CO2 laser might be the way to go. CO2 laser works incredibly well with almost all non-metal materials. It is ideal for acrylic. There are no barriers here. You can do clear, translucent, opaque, glitter, any kind of acrylic, you're gonna cut and get beautiful edges on. So that's a basic overview of what a CO2 is and what a diode is. Now, when you are trying to make the decision on do you need a CO2 or do you need a diode, here's some things I want you to keep in mind. The first thing is to look at and understand laser output. There's a lot of manufacturers that make all kinds of lasers. And when you're looking at two or three, you want to compare apples to apples. So always look at the output. Again, with a diode, this can range anywhere from five to 50 watts. And with a CO2 laser, we're going to go from about 40 all the way up to 300 watts. With the wattage on the lower end, you're not going to be able to cut as thick of materials. And the projects that you do are going to take longer. The higher the power, the thicker materials you'll be able to cut and the quicker the projects will get finished. You definitely wanna think about what types of materials you want to work with. Diodes and CO2 lasers can cut and engrave a lot of the same materials. CO2s are ideal for acrylic and wood. They give you a beautiful finish and they just, they cut and engrave really well and it's gonna go fast. Diodes work really well at engraving metals, not cutting. You cannot cut metal with a diode, but at engraving metals. And when you 
work with the speed and power, you can actually get some really cool effects on those metals with a diode laser. The next important thing to keep in mind is the lifespan. All lasers have a lifespan. At some point, you're either going to have to replace parts or get a new machine. Diodes have a longer lifespan than a CO2 laser. When you are looking to buy a laser, read the specifications. It should give you the amount of working hours that your laser will last. So make sure you're looking at that and understand what you're getting into. Running your laser, either one, at 100% power will deplete your lifespan faster. Whenever you get a laser, you want to play around with your settings and figure out the combination of speed, power, and passes that will get you the best cut and engrave, but try to stay under 100% power. I rarely go to 100. Space is really important to keep in mind. Diodes come in all shapes and sizes. I've mentioned you have portable diodes, so you can move them all over the place. You have these open style lasers that you can just pick up and go and put wherever you want. Then you have the bigger machines like the X-Tool S1 or the We Create Vision that are pretty heavy and you really can't move them around. I keep those two lasers on wheeled carts that I love. If you ever want to add accessories to your machines, like a riser or a conveyor, keep in mind how much space that's going to take up. The CO2 lasers are big to begin with, so if you were to add a conveyor or a riser or anything else, you're going to need even more space. So keep this in mind when you are purchasing a laser and think about what you're going to do down the road and how much more space you might need. Let's talk about software. There is a software out there called Lightburn that works with almost every laser in the industry. If you learn that, you probably don't need to learn the other ones. However, most companies are going to have their own software that works with their machines. Xtool has far and away the best software. It is really user-friendly and it allows you to create images. It allows anyone to create designs, not just designers or artists. You can walk in not knowing anything about creating designs and come out with something really incredible. Most other laser companies do have their own software as well. Some of the less expensive diodes do not, and you will have to use Lightburn or a free software. Now, probably the most important thing that you want to think about when buying a laser is price. Diode lasers cost less than CO2. That's probably why when you're out looking at craft or home lasers, you see a lot of diodes. They're just really budget friendly. High powered diode laser like the We Create Vision or Xtool S1 can cut and engrave all kinds of materials. If you are a small business owner looking to make large quantities of small items, you can probably get it done with one of those diode lasers. What I really like about the Xtool S1 is it has interchangeable laser heads. So you can go between a 10 watt, 20 watt, and 40 watt laser head. You can also use an IR module. If you wanna know what that is, video's down in the description. It helps you engrave on raw precious metals. It's pretty amazing. So if you're not sure where to start, you could get the Xtool S1 10 watt for under $1,000, and then you have the ability to upgrade it down the road. You keep the same body, you just change out the laser head. A CO2 laser is going to cost more. There is just more to the mechanics in it, but you're getting a much more powerful laser with very few limitations. The diode does have limitations. So be sure to know what kind of projects you wanna make before you invest in that laser. You don't want to get a diode home and then realize the only thing you want to do is cut and engrave clear acrylic because you cannot do that with a diode. You need a CO2 for that. So we covered the difference between a CO2 laser and a diode laser. My goal for this video was to just give you a lot of information so that when you are out there shopping for a laser, you understand what you're looking for and you can make a really informed decision. That way, when it gets to your house and you get it set up, you can just start crafting, you know what you have, and you're less likely to be disappointed once you start working with it. 
I have reviewed a ton of lasers on this channel. All the videos are down in the description. So if you're thinking of one in particular, definitely go take a look at those. And I wanna help you figure out which one of those is right for you. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'm here every week with tutorials and in-depth reviews on products that are gonna help you move your creative journey forward. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.